So hi, welcome to another Rider Can TV video and today we have got the 500X from Honda. Now, as I walk up to it, I just filled with antrepidation, if that's the word, ant antrepidation? Yeah. Of what it's gonna be like. Now this, this bike is, um, has got about 46 brake horsepower, power, about 43 newton meters of torque. It's about 178 kilos, so it's really light. It's gonna be really flickable, but this is um, also able to be restricted and is at the moment. So if you're um, riding on an A2 license in the UK, this is restricted to about 35 kilowatts, which is part of that legislation and stuff. So what better bike to have? How amazing is that if you've got an A2 license? So this is the 500X and they've added some nice new bits and new bits of um, body kit to make it look nice. They've got a, a 19 inch wheel, I think it is on the front rather than the 17 inch. They've got slightly knobbly wheels and I've been riding it this morning and you wouldn't know that it's got slightly knobbly wheels, um, but it adds to the aesthetics of it looking like an adventure bike. But on a bit of a budget, which is great. And what you get with Honda is the smoothness, the manufacturing, the attention to detail with manufacturing at Honda is just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. LED lights all around, get a nice screen that you can move up and down. You can't move it up and down on the fly, unfortunately, but once you get it set in the right place, it's good. Um, so let's get on and see what it's like on this lovely country seat with, guess what? This motorbike cod piece. Much like the Honda um, Africa Twins, which incidentally, when I sat on that Ho Africa Twin, probably one of the most comfortable seats that I've ever sat on on a motorbike. So I was pleasantly surprised. So when you turn it on, you get lovely graphics on your dashboard there. And then we're gonna go and find some twisty roads. Now this bike being a2 restricted at the moment, you'd expect it to be underpowered. Now I'm doing 35 there. If I give it a bit of acceleration, we're up to national speed limit within seconds. It's so nimble, this bike, it's unbelievable. And in fact, it's, you know, it's a joy to ride. I've been riding it around this morning, around probably about 30, 40 miles, something like that, around some different roads twisty roads on the dual carriageway and it holds its own it really does hold its own the seat in position really comfortable you're quite high up and it is quite a high bike although not as high as the africa twin but it's quite a high bike but really comfortable the seat is just right it's not too hard it's not too soft and it is on par with being as comfortable as the Africa Twin suit, which was quite a surprise and quite a re revelation for this bike, really. Now, sitting on the bike at the dashboard, you've got everything to hand. The dials, now initially when I started riding this bike, I thought these dials look a little bit, a little bit retro, a little bit um, bland. But in actual fact, the colours are really nice. And the colours reflect exactly what you need to see when you need to see it. So you've got a big speedo right in the middle, digital. In the middle of the rev counter, you've got the gear selector, so you know what gear you're in. And I found out the other day that you can have digital or TFT displays, but there are certain things that need to be, and I'm not sure whether it's legislation, but you need to be able to have the indicator lights as almost like physical lights that are workable if the screen goes down and things like the warning lights. So that's why they're outside of the TFT on most of the screens. So seat in position, like I say, my hands aren't too far apart. They're not too close either. It's a really comfortable position to be sat. And you can see just going around these corners how flickable this bike is. I'm going to have to stop because we're on this terrible junction. Look at that, straight out. I hear that burble. What an amazing little bike. Now the switch gear. Switch gear is Honda's usual switch gear. Really good. And like they say, if it's not broke, why fix it? 
it works really well when you press the buttons you know that you've pressed them the only slight niggle that i have had is i've overtaken a couple of vehicles this morning and when i've been looking for the indicator uh, button now that i'm getting used to where it is um, i have pressed the horn a couple of times which is a bit disconcerting because one it kind of breaks your flow of when you're overtaking and you've set yourself up for an overtake but it also might might not scare but jolt some other road users in the fact that you're using the horn when you don't need to use the horn that said really 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 good switch gear the wing mirrors although they're a bit of a strange shape i think they look really good with the bike and they add that real good functionality as well because even though they're quite big I can see everything I need to. I can see a little bit of my arm, which is great, and it, I kind of like seeing a bit of my arm in there because it gives me a perspective of where I'm actually looking. But I've got a good 360 view all around. There's nothing restricting my movement on the bike at all. And my knees and my legs don't feel overly bent up because I'm in an upright position. It's much more of an adventure-esque type style seating position. But my knees are really comfortable and don't feel squashed up or even too far down. I'm not getting any vibration from the pegs or through the handlebars. It just feels smoother than you know the engine is. Really weird thing to say, but it just feels so smooth. So let's get on to to 17 you can see that it holds its own you know this is no slouch at all this bike you know we'll be up to sit there we are 70 in no time at all in sick gear just purring away now with the screen in its current position I do notice that I'm not getting any buffeting whatsoever it's really quite sterile air but there's a lot of wind going across my helmet so if you are going to have one of these bikes and you're used to a quieter bike because you've got a bigger screen you might want to invest in a bigger screen or you might want to invest in just uh, a quieter helmet because it is putting the noise going across the helmet up to up quite an extent which is manageable but it's one of those things that you might notice when you first get on, on one of these bikes now I'm told to stop the buffeting and things like that, but the holes in front of the screen are there to dissipate some of the air that goes across, so it's, it's, it's more of a cleaner air that goes over your helmet. And I'm sure someone will correct us in, in the comments, but that's how I understand it. It's a very nimble bike, and I've been pottering around on it all morning, and it's put a big smile on my face. I didn't expect this bike to perform as well as it's performing. It just feels right. There's no vibrations, the seat position's good, I can see everything I need, I know it's made well. It's got a good tank, so it's going to go for quite a few miles. And I wouldn't have any doubts or any worries about taking this one on a tour, whether it's in the UK or whether it's abroad. I'd be quite happy on this one. You can take a pillion with ease. The pillion seat on the back is quite big. It feels like the, over, the overriding feeling I get with this bike is it feels very much like a baby Africa twin. And I kind of get the feeling that after riding this, if you're on an A2, you can ride it on the restricted. If you get it unrestricted because you've got that license, it's almost like the Africa Twin would be the next progression from this if you were to progress. But this bike, it comes at a really good price. It's got everything you should need. The only thing that I would add to it is things like hand guards and perhaps some heated grips because they don't come as standard. And perhaps something like a fender extender just for peace of mind that it's not going to damage that, um, damage the pipes or damage the oil filter but apart from that this bike is really nice and I said that it, it rides well it does really ride very very well the power is there when you need it 
And obviously you've got to look at what sort of bike you're on. We're not on a sports bike with a thousand cc and you know three million brake horsepower. We're on a bike that's that's made for a massive group of people to ride. And it does just what it says on the tin. Amazing little machine. Really, really like this little machine indeed. It's quite comfortable. It's very comfortable. It's very comfortable with the suspension. The suspension's not too hard, it's not too firm. And it just seems that they've hit the nail on the head with this bike. The, just the, the standard setup of this bike, the standard stuff on this bike, other than those tiny couple of additions, like especially in the UK, having heated grips because it's quite cold today, and perhaps some hand guards just to take that air, that cold air away from your hands. Other than that, I think this bike has got it all. And I, I would be quite proud to ride one of these bikes, either in the UK or off touring. I think it's a great little machine. Great little machine indeed. And I'm now getting used to where the indicators are, <laughs> rather than hitting the horn, which is just bad. So we'll find a nice little spot and we'll talk about what we think about the bike and we'll go around a few of the aesthetics you know have a look at the lights and the dashboard and that sort of stuff in a tiny bit more detail but what a fabulous little bike video he's laughing his head off for some reason i don't know why because i'm an idiot well i'm an idiot there you go yeah oh thanks you're meant to say no i'm not an idiot all right okay uh, we've got this lovely CB500X, and I tell you what, this is this is not only a great looking bike, but an incredible bike to ride. Really? Really, really. Well, I've got, got. I don't mean really like. I'm surprised. Yeah. <coughs> what I I thought that because this is an this is restricted for an A2 license, so you can obviously take that restriction off, but. This is a 500cc that you can have restricted for your A2 license. So if you've got an A2 license rather than your full A license, you can ride this one. And it goes like the clappers. This one is uh, restricted at the moment. I think it's about 35 kilowatt. So this one's got about 46 brake horsepower, about 43 Newton bananas. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about 178 kilos. It's really thin. It's really flickable, really nimble. But overall, it's so much fun to ride. And I thought, if it's restricted to an A2 license, will you be able to get up to 70 really quickly? Will you be able to keep up with traffic on a dual carriageway or motorway? Will you be able to flick it around on the 60s on, on, on the bends? 100% yes. Wow. I was doing 70 in no time on the dual carriageway, just trickling along. Um, 60 and, and you know national speed limit on all the bends didn't feel like it was going to get away with me it felt like it was a much bigger much more accomplished bike than it actually purports to be cool really really impressed with it so rides really well there's some things about it that are a little bit different but all add to the overall effect of it being a lovely little bike to ride so the clutch is really really loose so when you literally when you press that in i mean it's it's so fluid so fluid the gearbox is really nice and clunky because it's a brand new bike it's done no miles but it's it's smooth at the same time you know what gear you're in not having any false neutrals or anything like that um the seating position amazing it's just like being on an adventure bike and that's what it looks like doesn't it can i just say point something out though we've got the bike on the side stand so yeah mine obviously is the <laughs> these pads here are these for your knees yeah how far forward do your knees go well, depends <laughs> where you want to sit <laughs> but excuse me it, it, okay thanks for asking <laughs> whatever <laughs> <laughs> die quietly in the corner it's got a cod piece for your bits a cod yeah a so motorbike made a comment cod piece. about us using that before that's why i had to use it again <laughs> but really really comfortable seat i put this on par with the comfortable nurse if that's a word we're always making words up Comfort, on our channel as the africa twin seat wow really comfy and i think it's to do with this bit because you don't feel like you're being pushed up against a hard tank um it will do mile after mile i'm not sure of the range i mean it's not got a huge huge size tank 
but it's got all the usual refinements like the um, the switch gear exactly the same as on the bigger Hondas the wing mirrors really impressed with the wing mirrors really big, big see they? everything but they don't look for big mirrors they don't look out of place for the What's aesthetics that? of the bike aesthetics yeah aesthetics what? aesthetics or aesthetics whichever okay it's like um potato, appreciate potato. or appreci appreciate right isn't it the hell. Thing. you realize the grammar police have <laughs> <up>. yeah <laughs> 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 So it has got LED, so if you come round the front, Mr. Lovely Cameraman, LED headlights. <laughs> LED indicators. And it's a do you know what this reminds me of? The front of this, it reminds me very much like the V-Strom. Because the V-Strom has got this black pointy bit on the front now. Oh, Kawasaki Versus. And the Versus. They're all going kind of very pointy now. I do like it. The screen, I didn't get too much, I didn't get any buffering. Got a lot of wind noise across my helmet. No buffering though. Do you know where that is? Or buffer Apparently tank. it's something to do with this. Yeah. I never men never mentioned when we did the Kawasaki Versus mm -hmm. um, review. Yeah. I never noticed the big hole in the windscreen because you didn't see it necessarily. Yeah. If you were. And apparently that's to stop buffering. I'll wow. be corrected, I know I will, but you know, it didn't have buffering. Well, we're just two people who know nothing about bikes talking about I know about nothing. Bikes. I know nothing. But it doesn't look as though you can adjust it because it's all bolted in and oh, yeah. bolted in. So whether or not you can get an adjustment for it or just, or you can definitely move the whole clamp up one, but that, that will mean unbolting it, I'm sure. You might not be able to see it from there, long cameraman. Yeah. But there's a bar here that, Probably you fitting. could put your sat nav on Oy, it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, because um, you know, very often when we talk about bikes, we say, well, there's no real place for a sat nav. And then we get slated in the comments because actually there was no real place other than buy, buying a ball joint and putting one on, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But these people have thought about it, which is brilliant. So come around this side, cameraman. Walk this way. Walk this way, like it's that. Not that, word, like that. that. <laughs> on the top of the screen they've got a a sunshade wow how cool is that now the the screen itself is a really bog standard tft screen i say bog standard it's a it's a it's a digital screen rather than tft it's a digital screen it's got everything you need and we talked last week or whenever you've seen it when mark was doing the other honda bike the cb 650r 650r same screen, same screen. Um, and I, when I rode it, I thought these numbers are a bit dim, but actually they're just the right colour for when you're riding to get r the right information. Um, the fuel gauge is a little bit small and all of the stuff seems just a little bit small. But having said that, the positive is that all of the... Um, you could always sit closer to it. You could do. But the positive thing is that oh, all of the important stuff like the speed Thank you. and the rev that you're doing... Is, is really noticeable and you haven't got a fish around with your eyes to try and find it. Now the switch gear on here, brilliant Honda switch gear, exactly the same as any of the other Hondas. It works really well, it's well labelled, you know exactly what you're getting and as soon as you press it, you get that feedback so you know that it's pressed. The only kind of downside that I found was when I was fishing for the indicators, I hit the horn several times. <laughs> now I don't know whether that's because for me I'd probably have the whole cluster just turned around slightly so it was a bit higher but you know we've ridden it for I don't know about 20 30 miles something or you like have that club shaped hands I've got club shaped hands look at it <laughs> yeah I've got clubbed hands I cut the other bit out <laughs> <laughs> but um really really good feedback so you know that you're pressing the right stuff are the indicators the indicators lights on all the time when the engine's running like on yeah, the a lot of Hondas. I think so. I think so. Although I'm not 100% sure. We'll switch it on. We'll have checked. a look. Eh? Right. Is it oh, in neutral? Oh, oh. Hear that? Hear no, that? They're not. they're not. But the engine, it sounds. It sounds as though it's a lesser of a powered bike. It doesn't sound as smooth as like a four-cylinder because obviously this isn't. But it goes so well. So impressed with it. And it's really weird that you have to reach so far down to get your keys to turn it off. But it's got the HIS system, that you know, the Honda um, security system. 
which is really really good yeah, just moving wise you, uh, explain what HIS stands for but I know you don't know so Honda Intelligent Security System there you go teasing him there I'm going to get ribbed in the comments now because <laughs> it probably means his is still something safe uh, yeah safe <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what I really do like about this is this is a, a kind of like a, a refresh of the bike they've changed the panelling and they've changed the styling which makes it look more, much more of an adventure bike and I tell you what if I was learning to ride and I just got my A2 licence and I was at that age because in, in the UK if you're watching it from elsewhere um, I'm not sure what they do out um, abroad, but in the UK you can't now do all of your tests and ride what any bike that's out there from the off. You have to; it's like staged every two or three years, isn't it? Yeah. But if you've got I'm one sure of those some little correctors, well, they will do. But if you've got an A2 license, which means that you've done your CBT and your first one, and then you're on your A2, and you're having to wait to do your final test so you can ride bigger bikes, this is an immense little machine really flickable you can take a pillion on it as well look look at that pillion seat yeah yeah here we go for those who are interested that's about 10 inches that wide i went to a very select school where you learn to measure things like that it's quite special Bizarre. isn't it it's quite special but big grab handles to hold on to do you know what i don't like about it what do you not like about it the wheels what do you not like about the I wheels like really yeah why i just i don't know but you could have put spokes on it or a different I don't like the shape of the um, the cast wheels the, the cast wheels yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, th I think the cast wheels look really nice and this is a bigger wheel on this one than they had on the previous one did they yeah. say it was 18 19 19 no, 19, 19. 17 on the other one. yeah and I'm not sure whether you I'm not sure how you know the differences between the 17 and the 19 when you're riding but it just feels like it's the right tire to have right size wheel to have only on the bike only one disc on the front a bit weird isn't it well most bikes have two now don't they yeah a lot of bikes yeah. have two because obviously they don't, don't yeah they? but the brakes are really good but when you come down to a smaller engine like this is yeah. or the smaller makeup of the engine i would have liked to have seen um perhaps a bigger fender extender on the front because those those um pipes at the front are really exposed and right behind it easily accessible by things flying up is the oil filter yeah so I'm not sure why manufacturers do that sort of thing. I mean, it's it's a basic bike, but it's got some really nice bits to it. Perhaps there's a, uh, a belly pan you could put on there to give it a little bit. Of and I'm and I'm sure that they do lots and lots of extras. You I know, like it. it looks nice. It's though, it? it's lovely. It's lovely to ride. You can take your pillion. They're not so high up as different bikes. I can't even see it. But you get this little click when you put it down <laughs> made by Honda Honda do really good Honda stuff Honda clicks yeah. Honda clicks and you can tell that it's <laughs> you can tell that it's a longer bike than some sports bikes because you've not got this this bit hanging out the back which is quite nice it looks as though it should be there rather than some bikes having it added and how the, looking how odd the tires on it really good actually not noisy at all although I did have a lot of wind noise so going past the helmet so it kind of detracted from any noise that I might have heard from here do you and think you'd do better with road tyres on it rather than like a semi I don't know it cer certainly felt thing. very comfortable the one thing that I did get from it kind of a bit of a downside is that the amount of wind that was passing over my helmet wasn't giving me any buffeting or any problems but it stopped me being able to hear the engine so even though you've got the rev counter so you can change up and down and make sure that the bike's not overly laboring and it's riding how you want it to ride i couldn't pretend, i couldn't actually hear the bike's um, noise when it's in gear to know when it needs changing it was more like a, a natural thing that you would do on any bike okay. changing up and changing down but overall i really really liked it if you've got an a2 license don't look don't pass this one up they're not they're not um overly expensive um, and what you get for your money is just immense, isn't it? It is. I like, I, it's a nice looking bike, I think. I think the colour scheme does it a lot of favours. Yeah. Um, Absolutely lovely bike. Cool. And I had a massive smile riding it. There you go then. Yeah. Especially as soon as I had this cod piece. Your cod piece. Yeah, yeah. You're all about the cod piece. <laughs> Odd. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, if you've liked the video, give us a massive thumbs up. We'll hit that. I'll put that subscribe button there somewhere hit it we always like subscribers it's nice to hear your comments down the bottom good or bad 
Um, <laughs> it is. You know, it is. No, I it enjoy is. it. It is. I do. I enjoy it. My cough is getting better though, but thank you for asking. <laughs> Nobody cares. I oh, know. <laughs> See you in the next one.